Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Strength Things by Mel. My name is Melissa. I'm a stay-at-home mom living in Vancouver, Canada, and on my channel, I like to chat and share everything about my knitting hobby. Today, I thought it'd be a good time, a good day, just to do a little casual sit down and go through some of my spring and summer knitting plans. So I'm looking to get a head start on my spring and specifically my summer knitting so that I actually have these items to wear when the seasons uh, change. So it is February 14th, uh, Wednesday, happy Valentine's Day. And so I'm looking to you know, work on these patterns um, from now until about July, and at which point I'll switch back over to cold weather knits. And before I get into the list of the patterns that I've chosen to do, I'll get into something that I thought was going to be my last cold weather knit, um, but now I'm not quite sure. <laughs> so before really diving into the summer garments, I thought I was going to do one last cold weather knit, something I thought I was going to make to wear at the park with Darcy, because sometimes I don't like wearing a jacket, but it's still chilly. Um, this time up to, you know, even April sometimes. But I'm having a tough time deciding, you know, just let me just show you why I'm having a difficult time. Fisherman's Bowl from Lime Brand. Uh, this is the oatmeal color. And I have some Make It Tweed from Rico. So the idea is to um, make the linen sweater from Kadri. It's a new pattern that was recently released, um, I believe earlier this month. And so that is a kind of bulky weight pattern. It has a 15 stitch uh, gauge and I think it's 24 rows. So a little bit heavier than worsted. And I thought that'd be a perfect weight for kind of like a jacket sweater something to keep me warm without the need for an actual jacket um so i initially paired it with some drops brushed alpaca silk i've never used this in a garment before um alpacas usually fine on my skin although i have you know some hesitations about it after making my elizabeth blouse which had an alpaca Wool blend. I think that one's more just its texture, not the fiber itself. Um, but anyways, I have a bunch of this in my stash and I've just been kind of wondering, thinking like, what the heck am I going to use this for? Um, so it's just a uh, gray and swatched it up. So holding three strands, all three strands together. And this is the result. I hit gauge. So I'm not worried about, um, you know, that as aspect of this potential project. And then I was worried that it just looked too gray, maybe too flat in color. So I have a bunch of Touch Me Mohair in the natural color in my stash. It's just a really nice natural white. And so I held that instead of the brushed alpaca silk and the result is this. I decided to knit a small, smaller swatch because I got a patient. Um, but this one, it's nice that the color is not as flat. However, I feel like maybe the white fluff obscures uh, or tones down the tweed strand. And so I'm just, I just can't decide which one I like more. I think they both look fine. They look great. Turns out this is almost a, you know, a good dupe combination if you can't find that sake colorway from Noro on the Medora base. Um, but I just can't decide, you know, what vibe, what look do I want for my sweater? Do I want the tweed to really stand out? Or do I want there to be a little bit more, you know, dimension to the color? Do I want something that's a little bit more white or do I want to go with flat gray? I can't decide. So I'm kind of, I don't want to use the word abandoned, but I can't decide. <laughs> so 
probably won't be casting this on, um, at least not anytime soon. So this is no longer my, I'm going to make this as my last cold weather knit before spring summer knitting. I just kind of, kind of sit, I'm going to sit on it for a while. Um, but I wanted to share that with you guys in case you have any thoughts on, on the two, like what would you make for the linen sweater from Kadri? So with that out of the way, let's get into the more concrete plans. And one of them I already cast on. I cast it on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. Did not work on it during Super Bowl because uh, we were out at a friend's place. And um, I've made some pretty good progress already. So the first item that I want to have done for spring is another levitate wrap. And... I'm using like a totally different like yarn that I used for my first levitate wrap, which was um, knit up using Cascade Ecological Wool, uh, bulky weight um, wool held uh, single stranded. This time around, I'm using Drops Baby Merino held double in the color Sage. And I've already joined the front and the back panels, so I'm working back and forth on the body now. I'm using the suggested needle size. Um, there is a possibility that this is going to end up being smaller than the powder measurements, um, smaller than my first version of that, uh, but that is okay because for spring and summer, I like closer fitting items. Um, and I think that will make this just kind of easier to style and perhaps a little less casual looking, maybe. Um, show you. There's the color, Sage. Trops Baby Merino is 100% Superwash Merino. It is more of like a sport weight. And yeah, I just kind of had this like random thought. I was like, oh, I do want another Levitate Wrap. What happens? If I hold this double, um, swatched up, it seemed to work out. So here we are three days, three, four days later, and I'm it's well underway. Um, so this is something that I'm hoping to complete before our family vacation in March, because this is something I want to wear for our vacation. Um, so levitate wrap, first item, first garment. The next thing I want to have on my needles is something I want to have on my needles for vacation so that I can work on it during vacation. Um, and it's camisole number four from My Favorite Things Knitwear. The yarn I'd like to use for the project is yarn that I purchased from Knit City Vancouver in September from Fireweed Fiber Co. And they're based out of Winnipeg. And this is their Sweet Pea Sock Base in the color Is It Navy or Black? And it's just this gorgeous, rich, dark navy color. And there's some, you know, some spots look um, really dark black. Yeah, I'm sitting right by a window, so the color is a little bit blown out but just you can still appreciate the beauty of this um I think it looks pretty like tonal like evenly tonal I don't know can you really tell when you look at a skein if there's going to be any striping or pooling um camisole number four is not a stockinette fabric it, it's a broken double rib so I feel like that might help disguise any of the striping because of the texture might, you know, come into play that way. Um, so I'm not really worried about striping or pooling. I'm not going to do any like alternate skein, helical knitting, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, it's not, I don't know if lazy is the right word to use. Um, I just don't care enough to do those color management methods. Um, for example, what I'm wearing today is my latest finished object, which is the Paul sweater pattern from Morica Knit. I used four skeins of the Aura Sport base from Sunday Fiber Co. Um, in the color Rosewood. Did not alternate skeins, did not do anything. I just knit the yarn as is. And it is so even. I mean, this is just, you know, evidence of how 
while Elise dyes her yarn. Um, I think I have, might have just like one little section here where I had to uh, rejoin, jo rejoin the yarn to do the sleeve. And that's like the only spot I see any little bit of pooling, but it's so minimal. And um, yeah, so camisole number four is what these skeins are destined to become. I'd like to be already working in the round by the time I go on vacation, uh, just to make it easy to jump in and out of the project. But um, that is the first camisole I would like to have ready uh, for summer. And really, in terms of temperature wise in Vancouver, when I'd be able to wear a camisole, like say on its own, probably not till July, really. There might be some time in May. So usually May is really nice. June is cold and then again, it gets warm. Some people would say hot again in July. Um, you might also be thinking like, I'm going to use sock yarn, like a merino for a camisole. And like, yes. Um, I made two summer tops last year out of merino. Temperature wise, I was totally fine. I also run kind of cool, especially if there's any sort of breeze. My body's just like, whoo, chilly. And it could be like 28, 30 degrees with a breeze and I'm just fine. Um, uh, my favorite outfit, um, kind of formula <laughs> that I like to wear in summer is a tank top and jeans and not just like, not jean shorts, like full on jeans. Like that is, um, yeah, that's just my go-to and that's what I feel comfortable with. Even if it's 30 degrees, I like to think I'm genetically predisposed to, uh, thrive in warm weather. So I recall when I was traveling in Vietnam, for example, uh, it was like, most people would say like it was hot and there were some times where I was wearing like a scarf when we were on, on a boat on the river. Um, my husband was like sweating and I'm just like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of chilly. I need to wrap myself up. It was not a modesty thing. It was like a temperature thing, but anyway, let's move on. Uh, the second chemisole I want to make is camisole number seven and I have here some premium silk sock from a supplier called Rooster out of the UK. This is something I discovered when I was shopping for some more Addy needles. When I purchased Addy needles I purchased from a shop called The Laughing Hens which is based in the UK. I found them originally first um through Amazon and then I discovered that they had their own website and like the shipping and the prices all seem to be the same so I purchased directly from their website and saw that they also carry this yarn which um, you would buy with the intention to dye uh, but I really like the natural color that it has it's like a creamy I guess warm white um, and the reason why I was drawn to this is that after making my Audrey top but a dress I was kind of fixated on the idea of knitting with silk again but not 100% silk because what happened with the Audrey dress is that it like it stretched out like the eye cord and the underarm area stretched out enough that you could see uh, my bra underneath so I did remedy that with some elastic uh, threaded directly through the eye cord and uh, through the underarm um, so I could do that again with a camisole, but I wanted to just kind of experiment and see if I can find something with a silky feel that is going to have more longevity. And I was just thinking about, well, socks, socks are made to, you know, stretch out over a foot and like, you know, spring back into a uh, shape. So why can't I make, you know, camisoles and especially ones with negative ease, um, with a sock base. So this one is a 60% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 20% silk. This is 100 grams, 425 meters. Uh, so I'm going to use this to make camisole number seven. The third camisole I would like to try making is the 9 p.m. tank from Tiffany Tie or Tiff Knit. Uh, this one, I haven't actually measured out 
or weighed out this partial skein that I have here. But I'm hoping between these two, which are leftovers from my Chemisole 9 that I made last year, um, is enough to make this little top because it is, I am planning to make it with negative ease. I am a skinny person, so I don't require a lot of yarn. For example, my mini mock neck tank, uh, a Jessie made uh, design, I used, I think, one skein of fingering weight yarns um, for that top. So I feel like the amount of fabric I need to create is similar uh, to that. So I'm hoping, and because this is more of a sport weight, not a fingering weight, so we'll see um, when we get there. I've been really uh, enjoying this color. I really like it in my Camisole 9. So I would like to have another item uh, for the summer out of this yarn. I will say on camera, it's coming out more green and less yellow. Like it, think of olive oil, like the color is called olive. So I feel like it's not coming out as true on my camera right now. Um, imagine it with a little bit more yellow, like olive oil. All right, so I have two more tops that I'd like to fit in. Maybe these ones should be geared towards springtime or maybe these will be for late summer, like transition into fall uh, because these are long sleeve tops with a strand of mohair in one case. So a recently released pattern is the cognac sweater from Atelier Casting. And um, I was definitely knit fluenced by Rebecca of Hip Knit Hooray. Uh, she made one in a beautiful color, uh, like a caramel kind of color. Uh, but she specifically said that she only needed two skeins of the fingering weight uh, that she used. And the way she kind of phrased it, you know, something along the line of if you've been holding on to a couple of special skeins. And then that made me immediately think of some yarn that I've been holding on to. Kind of like, you know, these are special. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I also purchased it impulsively in that limited quantity, not knowing what I was going to do with it. Uh, but this one's kind of neat in that there are two different ways to finish this top. So one way would be with the one by one twisted rim. And the other option is with I-cord edging, and that is the option I want to go with. And it's also knit at a large gauge for um, this yarn co combination of fingering plus lace. It's knit on six millimeter needles, which is like the Lento sweater. So with a large gauge like that, I thought it would be appropriate for spring because it would be breezy, have a nice drape, not feel too warm. So the yarn that I am going to use for it is from Sunday Fiber Co. And it's from the Cottage Garden collection last year. And the, I have here the Solstice Fingering in the color Lamb's Ear, which is just a really pretty kind of pale silvery green like the plant lambs here. And I also have the same colorway in the, the mohair. So I would hold that with the fingering. You hold it together. Uh, but yeah, I only have two skeins of this fingering weight. So it's pretty perfect that Rebecca mentioned that and this pattern has come out because I was considering the Lento. However, the Lento, I don't know. I just didn't want a raglan, another raglan. I just wanted something more special. Like, uh, I didn't want something so casual. Like I find raglan can be really casual. Um, and it just, you know, raglans don't excite me as much. So I'm also seeking things that have construction methods that are going to be, you know, engaging or intriguing, more interesting. So the uh, cognac sweater has a continuous set and sleeve, which I'm very into, um, like wanting to do. So it's like going to 
kind of fulfill or satiate my need for a different construction method and, you know, have a pattern that I can use just two skeins of fingering for. And the last top I'm hoping to make uh, for this season, uh, for spring, summer, is another cumulus blouse, um, the v-neck version. I have one in the touch me mohair. Um, this one here. Uh, this one held double and I do like it. Uh, I do wear it. Um, I was just thinking that I would love to have another one in, in a color. Um, so I purchased some skeins of mohair from Tofino Knit Co. at Knit City last year. Ugh, I'm dropping them. This is the color Salong Sage. Really pretty. I hope it's okay on my skin. Taking a chance. I always say green is my favorite color, uh, especially sage. And yet thinking of what I have knit up I don't think I have like very many green knits if any actually um, other than what I have on my needles the levitate wrap there's just something about green that I'm very particular about like I have store-bought things um, items uh, in green but Green is one of those things, like it can't be too Christmassy looking um, and it can't be too pastel pastel or too pale, um, I, which is the reason why I think I've been holding on to this lamb's ear for so long. I am a little concerned about maybe it's too pale for me. Um, it's just got to be the right green. Okay, that's what I've, you know, written down, like concrete plans for spring and summer knitting what i'm going to be working on from now until about july switch over to switch back over to cold weather knits at that point maybe revisit um you know this this situation at that point will i get through the entire list um well at least two of them I want to say for sure because they're vacation related, um, but we'll see. There, are, you know, there's some other yarns in my stash that I would like to use, but I just haven't um, discovered or come across the right pattern for. So definitely open to changing up my plans a bit. But I know, I know I want more camisoles. I want to definitely focus on that now. Like I'm kind of over the the big woolly knits right now and. So we'll see if I stick to my plans or not. Now that it's like I've said it and I'm putting it out there, I feel like I got to stick to it, right? Right? <laughs> Anyways, I'm always for like if something changes, then you just go with that as well. Like I'm I'm pretty relaxed but that way. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, guys. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, but until next time, happy knitting. Bye. Bye.